my name is Rizwan and I'm an emergency physician and today I'm going to talk about thyroid storm, a life-threatening form of all hyperthyroid states. What makes thyroid storm interesting is that it's diagnosed clinically. What makes thyroid storm complicating is that it's hidden behind its underlying triggers. I'm going to present to you two relevant clinical cases which will help us pace the clinical discussion around the diagnosis and its management. At the end, we'll do a quiz if we're all ready and well prepared. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. First case involves a 70-year-old gentleman who came to emergency in severe respiratory distress. He was tachypneic, he was also hypoxic, and sat's about 88% on room air. He was also tachycardic in fast atrial fibrillation with a rate of about 145 per minute and had a systolic blood pressure of 80. He was febrile with a temperature of 40 degrees Celsius and was quite confused and disoriented. It was difficult to judge whether his condition is because his fast AF is pushing him into acute pulmonary edema or whether it's all just sepsis. The second case is quite different. It's a 41-year-old lady, previously fit and well, who was recently flown in from a long-haul flight and now presenting with a week's history of exertional dyspnea. She was tachycardic at 110 and ECG shows sinus tachycardia, but she was not hypoxic and had normal oxygen saturation. So, when the blood results came back, both patients had non-existent thyroid stimulating hormone and grossly elevated T3 and T4. However, what's interesting is that with very similar looking thyroid function test results, the elderly patient was in thyroid storm and the younger female patient was in thyrotoxicosis. So we're going to talk about the clinical hyperthyroidism, why it happens. The reason it happens is either because of the overproduction of thyroid hormone or an excessive response to the thyroid hormone. And clinically, it manifests in one of the three states. Number one, hyperthyroid state, in which the gland is overproducing the thyroid hormone. T3 and T4 are being overproduced in excessive amounts and you get the clinical effects of the thyroid hormone. Number two, thyrotoxicosis, in which there's an excessive amount of thyroid hormone, which could be because of the gland overproduction. It could be because of an overdose on thyroid medication or any other cause from that matter. And number three that we are more interested in today is thyroid storm. Now, thyroid storm is severe, life-threatening form of thyrotoxicosis in which there is adrenergic hyperactivity. Basically, what happens is that thyroid hormone is exerting its peripheral effects by altering the receptors and getting them to generate an adrenergic crisis, which we see in a form of cardiovascular symptoms and catastrophes and neurologic symptoms and catastrophe like seizures and coma. And we'll focus our discussion on this topic today. So why does thyroid storm happen? Well, there are a number of different conditions which can trigger a thyroid storm. Some of the most common conditions include uh, infections, chest infections, pyelonephritis, metabolic emergencies like diabetic ketoacidosis, hyperglycemic, hyperosmolar, non-ketotic states. Also conditions like pulmonary embolism, acute myocardial infarction and CVA can trigger thyroid storm crises. The other common conditions include uh, overdose on thyroid medication or sudden or abrupt withdrawal of thyroid medications. Also trauma, stress and surgeries are enough to trigger off the thyroid storm. Obstetric emergencies are other common cause. So how does thyroid storm present? Well, thyroid storm is a clinical diagnosis in someone who is hypothyroid for example, someone who's taking thyroid medications. And also, high fever is a cardinal feature of thyroid storm. Now, think of thyroid storm as a condition in adrenergic crisis state with neurologic and cardiovascular manifestations. So cardiovascular signs would be on the likes of palpitations, tachycardia, atrial fibrillation, the patients may go into an acute pulmonary edema and may develop a pleural and pericardial rub and sometimes also water hammer pulse. 
The, the neurologic manifestations are quite random. The patient may be initially agitated and confused, may go on and develop a seizure, and may have prolonged drowsiness and coma. In a thyroid storm is a clinical diagnosis, especially in someone who's already on thyroid medications. Remember when you give an endocrinologist a call and thinking that, look, this patient might have a thyrotoxic state uh, based purely on the biochemical results, but that's not the case. So, if the patient has got those gross abnormality in terms of uh, adrenergic crisis, cardiovascular signs and neuro neurologic signs, plus a low TSH and very high T3 and T4, then the patient has got thyroid storm. You might like to do an ECG which may show a tachyrhythmia, sinus tachycardia, atrial fibrillation or any other form of supraventricular atrial rhythm. The patient may also have uh, the investigation suggestive fibrin underlying trigger, like we've talked about infections, the um, metabolic triggers like DKA or hyperglycemic hyperosmolar states, and also sometimes vasculopathic state, like the patient might be having a stroke or acute myocardial infection or maybe having a PE. So just be on the lookout for those underlying triggers, which might be a predominant features in the patient's presentation, and the thyroid storm may be overshadowed. Before I go into the specific of thyroid storm management, let me highlight that these patients are generally very sick because of the underlying trigger. They might be septic, they may have tachydysrhythmias, they might be in flash pulmonary edema, or they may have other crises like PE or acute myocardial infarction or DKA. So it's very important that we stabilize these patients in resuscitation area. Now, if they're in shock, they need to be treated with intravenous fluid, judiciously if they are elderly and susceptible to the volume overload, but also carefully that they need dextrose to replenish those glycogen stores. Now, word of caution, the patients who are alcoholics and you treat them with dextrose, they can develop Wernicke's encephalopathy. So it's very important these patients are actually pre-treated with thiamine. Now, these patients may have very high fever and that needs to be cooled down. Any of the external cooling measures, evaporative method, cooling fans can be tried. The other thing is that you can try medications like paracetamol, but don't give aspirin because it increases the free T4 levels. So the specific management of thyroid storm is based on four blockages. Uh, number one blockage is to block the release of the thyroid hormone from the thyroid gland. And that can be done by giving them thiolamides like propyl thioerosyl and methimazole. The second step is the blockage of the production that can be done by giving them iodine, Lugol's iodine, or lithium even. The third step is actually preventing or blocking the peripheral conversion of T3 T4 to T3. So T3 is much more active form and by giving them steroids like hydrocortisone or dexamethasone, we are preventing the conversion of more uh, T4 to more active T3. So that's very important. And the last step is to inhibit those peripheral receptors, block those peripheral receptors which are causing all those tachycardic response by giving propranolol. So the important step here to realize is that release of thyroid hormone from the gland with propyl thioracyl and methimazole is the first step that must be done before the blockage of the production of thyroid hormones by the gland, which is done by the iodine or lithium. So in summary, thyroid storm is a clinical diagnosis with its cardinal features of high fevers and commonly tachyarrhythmia, most likely a sinus tachycardia or natal fibrillation. Most of its signs and symptoms are exerted by adrenergic cardiovascular responses and neurologic responses. Most of the triggers are because of infection, metabolic state, and vasculopathic states like PE, AMI, and stroke. Also remember, 25% of the cases, you may not be able to find the underlying trigger. An important management 
issue in the management of thyroid storm is to block the release of thyroid hormone by using thionamides like PTU and methimazole before blocking the production of thyroid hormone by using iodine or lithium. Now this is a very crucial management aspect that we must remember. Also, you must remember that if the patient is presenting with severe tachycardia and its atrial fibrillation, do not ever use amiodarone to control that heart rate because it may itself cause thyroid storm. Also, if you're suspecting that amiodarone is the trigger of the thyroid storm, then do not use iodine to block the production of thyroid hormone in second step of its management. Now, just putting it out there, the way the thyroid hormone is released and absorbed, blockage of an enterohepatic circulation is also one of the main management aspects in some of the patients in thyroid storm or thyroid crisis. I hope you liked the presentation on thyroid storm.